They made the decision to leave everything behind and embark on a perilous journey to a distant village untouched and unscathed by the bitter animosity between Umobi and Umoka. Their sudden disappearance sent shockwaves throughout both kingdoms, intensifying the already simmering tensions. Accusations of betrayal filled the air as Umobi and Umoka pointed fingers at one another, each convinced that the other had conspired to steal their star-crossed lovers. The war, fueled by suspicion and vengeance, reached its climax, threatening to consume the lands and all who dwell within. Granny, I'm ready for that story now. You promised you'd tell me a story the next time I come visiting. Oh yes. I remember. Did I say the particular one? Yes, Granny. The one about the two kingdoms at war. That's right. But before we get into the story, let's make a request to the audience. Please, like, comment and subscribe. Very many decades ago, there existed in the heart of Africa two great kingdoms. The Umuabi Kingdom and the Umuaka Kingdom. They had been at war for years. The ongoing conflict was born out of a grievous misunderstanding that occurred almost a century ago, shrouded in mystery and misconceptions. You see, the people of Umuaka believed that the people of Umobi kidnapped and imprisoned their king, King Ifai, while the people of Umobi also believed that the people of Umoka kidnapped their princess, Princess Neka. As the decades passed, both kingdoms held onto their deep-seated resentment, nurturing a bitter divide. Within the palace walls of Umoka, King Obi found himself in a difficult situation. His queen had died while giving birth to their daughter. Because of the love he had for his wife, he had refused to remarry, and now he was looking to his daughter to marry and give him an heir. His daughter Ada grew up to be spirited and headstrong. In his attempts to secure her future and form familial alliances, the king sought suitable suitors for Ada. However, much to his dismay, Ada adamantly rejected every prospect that crossed her path, yearning for a love that would ignite her soul. She would always say, Father, Forever is too long a time to spend with someone I don't love. I want to find love, like you did with mother. Exhausted and driven by anger, King Obi resorted to force, compelling Ada to choose a man against her true desires. Frustrated and disheartened, Ada impulsively fled the palace, seeking solace in the comfort of a hidden cave she had discovered near the flowy river as a young girl. Across the land in Umobi, a similar narrative was unfolding within the royal family. King Chukwemeka, ruler of Umobi, faced the challenges of finding an equally worthy match for his son, Prince Namdi. Like Ada, Namdi found himself distraught and suffocated by the pressure to conform to societal expectations. Driven by his inner turmoil, Prince Namdi too sought refuge in the very same cave that Ada had found solace in. It was in the cave that their love story began. Although their first meeting was nothing near romantic, they got into a heated argument over the ownership of the cave. They had to come to a compromise since they both did not want to return back to their homes at that moment. As they kept meeting in the cave, their hearts began to soften, breaking the walls of anger. Amidst the chaos and war, Ada and Prince Namdi found a deep love that went beyond the limits of their kingdoms. Their secret meetings helped them understand each other's pain and the desire for peace. They realized the duty they both had to end the long-standing conflict. Father, I found a man I want to marry. Ada told her father, happy that she'd escaped the arranged marriage. King Obi too was happy, but upon hearing the man was the prince of his rival kingdom, 
he blew up and forbade her from seeing Prince Namji ever again. When they met in the cave again, Namdi told Ada that he had also gotten into the same argument with his father. Ada and Prince Namdi were deeply in love, their hearts entwined amidst the chaos of war. Instead of succumbing to the bitter divide between their kingdoms, they made a daring choice that would change the course of their lives forever. They decided to elope. They made the decision to leave everything behind and embark on a perilous journey to a distant village untouched and unscathed by the bitter animosity between Umopi and Umoka. Their sudden disappearance sent shockwaves throughout both kingdoms, intensifying the already simmering tensions. Accusations of betrayal filled the air as Umobi and Umoka pointed fingers at one another each convinced that the other had conspired to steal their star-crossed lovers. The war, fueled by suspicion and vengeance, reached its climax, threatening to consume the lands and all who dwell within. But fate had other plans in store for both kingdoms. As the decisive battle loomed between Umopi and Umoka, a twist of destiny unraveled before their eyes. Ada had met with an old couple while she was at the market. Sensing that she was new, the couple began to share tales and told her all that she would need to start a new life in the very kingdom. It was during this conversation that the truth was discovered. Her and Prince Namdi, now fully aware of the historical ties that bound them, returned back to their community ready to settle and end this war once and for all. To their dismay, both kingdoms were already at the battlefield, ready to fight to the death. To the utter astonishment of both kingdoms, the long-lost King Ifani and Princess Neka suddenly emerged from the shadows. Their story, like forgotten legend, began to unfold. The air was thick with anticipation as their revelation echoed through the sprawling battlefields. My father had wanted me to marry someone else, but I was in love with Kinky Fine. We made the decision to run away, but I see now that it has resulted in this war. Princess Neka confessed, tears streaming down her face. With tears streaming down their aged faces, King Ifai and Princess Neka gathered their people, desperately pleading for the senseless bloodshed to cease. In a beautiful and heartfelt moment, the people's hearts were washed clean by forgiveness and reconciliation. They each embraced one another, rekindling the flame of love that had ignited their forbidden union. In their unity and shared desire for peace, Mobi and Umoka recognized the futility of their long-standing animosity. As the sun began to set on that auspicious day, the two kingdoms intertwined their hands, merging into a harmonious entity, and they were called Ubiuto. A joyous celebration ensued, marking the marriage of the prince and princess Ada and Prince Namdi as a symbol of the unification of Umobi and Umoka. From that moment onward, the newly formed kingdom flourished, not just economically and politically, but in the spirits of its people as well. The story of Ada and Prince Namdi became a timeless and cherished tale, showcasing the triumphs of love over hatred. It served as a poignant reminder to the future generations of the boundless power of forgiveness, the unwavering strength found in unity, and the transformative nature of compassion. As time went on, Obuto became a beacon of hope, a shining example of what could be achieved when worlds tore apart and hearts were opened. The once divided lands bloomed with mutual respect as bridges were built and barriers were dismantled. The scars of war gradually healed, replaced with a vibrant tapestry of diversity tolerance and cooperation. Under the wise and compassionate rule of King Namdi and Queen Ada, the newfound kingdom flourished like a garden in full bloom. They led their people with grace and kindness, fostering an environment that encouraged equality, 
understanding and the celebration of differences. That was an amazing story, Grandma. With lots of lessons. Can you tell me one? Our choices does not only affect us but also those around us. If King Hifeani and Princess Neka did not run away, the war wouldn't have started in the first place. You've always been a smart kid. Let's go to bed. Wait a minute. Your name is Granny Ada and Grandpa's name is Nandi and the name of our village is Abuto. That means this is you and Grandpa's story. So it's real. Off to bed, young man.